So here's the Big Bang as it was understood um, when I started college, or even when I started graduate school, more or less. And to here we are today, and as we go back in time, we extrapolate back to um, times of higher, so we have an expanding universe, we extrapolate back to times of higher temperature, higher density, and in fact the extrapolation goes all the way back to a singularity 14 billion years ago um, with density and temperature of infinite values. And there's various, you, you, mo you can model the universe along the way and get, get all kinds of um, interesting features. The, trans the transition from opaqueness to transparency is very important to cosmologists. Formation of nuclei, you take the physics you know from the world around you and then put it in, extrapolate into this context and you can learn a lot about how the universe should be, including for the biologists, the formation of life somewhere in here. So, um, but then some time ago, people started thinking about grand unified theories that, tr that tell us a different story about what happened at very high temperatures. And it suggested to us that there could be a new state of matter that the universe enters into called potential dominated matter that would lead to some very different kind of physical behavior in the early universe. And so there's interesting consequences. Suppose there is this period of potential dominated matter. Um, the expansion of, of that kind of matter actually expands without dilution and leads to an exponential rate of expansion, and that's called cosmic inflation. It's capable of diluting out unwanted components of the universe, like curvature and magnetic monopoles, and that was considered a major um, coup to be able to do that. Um, it also, when you get into the technical details, seems to offer an explanation for the approximate homogeneity and to actually quantify the deviations of, from homogeneity that we observe in the universe. So that seemed to be a very, um, very nice feature to have. And it seemed, when you tie all this together, that many ingredients that go into the standard Big Bang by hand seem to be explained naturally by cosmic inflation. And in particular, it gave us a way, so there's all this beautiful data. This just came out. There's data constantly coming out, um, I think, this is actually 2011. Anyway, there's, there's lots of exciting data um, that's just constantly coming about about the universe, and the theoretical curves you see on these plots and many others all come from cosmic inflation theory. So it gives you something really concrete. When you take data about structure in the universe, it gives you something really concrete to talk about. In the meantime, there's something more of interest to this conference. No one's really talking about data. Um, more of interest to this conference is that the in many people's understanding and in a, in a way of thinking that goes back to Roger Penrose, it's the essential homogeneity of the universe at early times that is the way the past hypothesis is, is expressed. Once you include gravity in, the, in, the, in, the, in your calculation, homogeneity, in other words, the opposite of gravitational collapse, is, is a low entropy state. And that's how the past hypothesis is realized in the universe as we know it. Um, now, this question of how naturally um, inflation does what it does has a lot to do with the process and likelihood of actually entering this potential dominated state. And this is the expert debate that people struggle with. And is, um, it's interesting that there's sort of two communities. People who struggle with this question of how inflation really might come about, the simple picture of the little singularity at the top isn't how people think anymore. It's much more complicated. Maybe it's a string theory landscape. Maybe it's something else. But um, there's people who worry about all these things. And then there's people who are just happy to have curves to fit to their data and don't wonder what these other people are worrying about because inflation is surely right because it fits all this beautiful data. So there's lots of exciting debate. And my talk is actually isolating a couple of interesting pieces of that as they relate to the arrow of time. So that's the end.